Fart everyone and welcome to episode 28 of Asara. It is mighty fine to be back in our fine nation. Unfortunately, I am by myself. Skib is uh, not joining us in this app, which is a real bummer. However, seeing as he's not here, I've decided that I'll spend the first part of this episode doing a bit of a live play um, as we build the financial district of Elkanem. Before we get there, I thought I might just show you a couple of bits and pieces that we've been building over the last six months. I mean, this is like I do every time I open up Osara or even any save game really. Just float around and get a bit of an idea of what we've been building and maybe find some inspiration of just the things that uh, we've been working on over the last six months. It's been crazy. Can't believe it's already been six months. This is just like a little neighborhood that I built quite a while ago and I, I just thought I'd start here because I really love this spot but I hardly ever, hardly ever revisit it. Um, and that's the same with this uh, cargo, not cargo, what is it? Uh, it's a... It's a ferry. <laughs> I really, I really like this little spot too. I was crazy sick when I recorded the commentary for this one and it's, I don't know, I think it's actually one of my best videos that's out. But I was, I hated, I hated my voice during it. You know, it's just one of those things you hate recording it, but then people end up watching it more than anything else, which is um, fun, but kind of annoying. This is my second video, second app little cargo yard just here makes for some good little screenshots and cinematics I think that's a vanilla ship right there it's it's one of the better vanilla assets on the workshop creeping along just avoiding the city to avoid that FPS drop we are making our way there very slowly got a prison that Skip built this um he's got such r cool little bits of detail that I wouldn't even wouldn't have even thought about plopping in this, it's just such a cool little place down here. Got some cows. Uh, what else can I show off? Hmm. Uh, one of one of my most favorite builds was building this bridge right here, and all these farms below it. We're not getting trains at the moment. I don't know why. I think I might need to fix that. I'm not going to fix it in this episode, but that is something that we do need to work on because that I used to love watching trains come through here and. You know, we do need trains, like we're going to need some more passengers and some tourists and we're going to need some cargo coming in through, uh, coming in too. Um, one of the coolest features I think about Osara are these ships that come in every now and again. They're not, they don't come that frequently, which is very realistic, I think. I just love them when they come past. I've made them, I've changed the speed on them so they go really slow, um, just like they usually would. I mean, there's a lot of things we're going to need to fix up, like these patches here. I mean, these are just things that we work on as we go, as uh, Skip and I build. We're going to do a couple of episodes, I think, where we're probably going to fix up a whole bunch of things. This is one of my favorite Skip builds, I think. A place that I hardly ever visit because uh, it's just it's just ages away. It's ages away from anything and I kind of forget all about it. But it's such a nice little spot. Making our way towards the city, let's bypass the oil fields. One of my favorite builds, one of my least viewed videos. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. I really liked this build. Uh, so much, we've built so much over the last six months. It's really cool. Some of our first builds over in the distance over there. Heading into the city, expect a couple of FPS drops as we get into the more populated areas. I'm going to try and avoid as much glitchiness as possible. You know, we've got some seriously sprawling suburbs now, which is very, very cool. And which then leads me to our build today, because I, I feel like the next step for Osara is to get the financial districts, some bigger buildings into the city to make it really really more city-like. Oh, this is what happens when you record an episode at the very end of a day. You lose your English. Um, I, I want a skyline. So I think we need to uh, start working on this area so that we can get a bit of a skyline for when we're looking at Osara from a distance. 
I've just placed down a couple of roads just to get a bit of a layout of where I think I want things to go. My next step is now to use this little stretch over here to basically find anything that I think would be useful for uh, my financial district. Placing down any big buildings that I've downloaded, uh, two of the same building. <laughs> Uh, just basically getting anything that I think I might want to use. Um, it's gonna be boring, so I'll um, I'll just skip past this part and I'll join you guys in a little while once I've finished doing it. Okay, so I've just placed down all the buildings that I think will be best fitting for this financial district. Placed them in somewhat of clusters of things that I want to look at. Got some offices around here, some commercial district things, and. Uh, some more uh, skyline-esque buildings. I'm going to try and stick with this building here being the tallest. I don't really know whereabouts it sits in the world. Well, that might give a bit of an indication. Um, but I really love it. I think I'm a massive sucker for buildings that are joined with some sort of bridge. Twin buildings are always some of my favorites. So I'm going to use this as just a bit of a base to figure out where the rest of everything else is going to sit. Um, I think... So a lot of this takes a bit of playing around to get used to. And quite a lot of looking from certain angles to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want. Oh, these guys are joined in the middle. Can I have two buildings that are joined? Is that... Is that a bit excessive? I don't know. I'm 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 just gonna leave it for night for now. I'm, I'll see if maybe I'll end up changing it, but <laughs> I don't know if I can justify two buildings joined in the middle. So I'm just playing with how big I want this area to be. I don't want it to be massive. I really don't want Asara to have a massive skyline. Skib's the same, he doesn't really want it either. That is not a huge building in that distant, uh, in that distance over there, so I think that is probably best fitting. I'm gonna keep working with this and get more of a feel of how I want all this to look, and I will come back in two secs. Alright, so I've chosen the buildings that I want for the skyline. Let me give you a bit of reasoning behind the thought process. First up, I wanted this to be the tallest building. I wanted it to be the tallest building by like, quite a bit. So that's why I've chosen this one here. Wanted it to be a real feature, so I'm going to put some sort of garden below it that's gonna take up quite a lot of space. Um, like think about the Burj Tower in uh, the United Emirates, like in um, so Dubai. This would be somewhat similar to that sort of an iconic look. I also have next to it the second tallest building of Asara, which is this one here. I'm pretty sure this is a Chicago building. So, I mean, you might be thinking uh, it doesn't really fit so much with the sort of builds we're doing. The reason why I chose it is because I wanted there to be a really big, bold building within this skyline. And this one seems to fit the feel the most. So I chose this one, plus it's a beautiful texture. I, I was generally going for white buildings. The rest of the buildings are just general modern buildings. I mean, we have these ones here that are really super nice. Again, joined by a bridge. That's That makes two buildings. Uh, a couple of vanilla buildings. This one, this lot just down here I chose because I wanted this to kind of have the feeling that it was owned by the same building company. They were all built together. This is like a row of hotels. Generally, I'm going to fill this out with smaller buildings, more commercial buildings around here and parkland. I mean, under usually underneath tall skylines like this, you don't get huge amounts of buildings underneath. The last thing I want to show off is this little spot here that I wanted to turn into a mall. Uh, only pedestrian pathway. I mean, this is something that's really common in Australia where you have a road that has now been converted into solo, uh, solely a pedestrian way. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of malls, uh, shopping centers and things like that around this little area here. That's generally it for what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be working in this one little spot just for today. I'm pretty keen to get into it. Actually, I'm, I'm going to get into it right now. 
So kicking off the time lapse, I'm going to be working on this pedestrian mall. I really wanted, to, I've actually been wanting to build one of these for a really long time. Uh, like I said before, we have heaps of them in Australia. I've seen heaps of them all over the world, but I do really like them because I do like imagining what they used to look like before they were this walkway, this, um, this street that has been converted into pedestrians only. And for the feeling for this little area, well, I wanted the shops to have a far more wealthier feel to it than I guess the rest of Asara has been. Um, we have been building this for a little while now and I think we've been focusing on, I guess, one sort of class. Whereas I wanted to start getting into more of the wealthier uh, side of Asara in this episode. And by the way, this this build, like, I, I do quite a bit in terms of figuring out what I'm going to be doing. Um, but it is a bit of a two-parter. I do want to finish off the rest of it in the next episode on my channel. Um, there are a couple of things that I do want to just touch up. For instance, I want to do a bit more around the waterfront and some of the more of the neighboring uh, suburbs, I guess. But in terms of figuring out the skyline, I think I've pretty much got it figured out. I do really hope Skib enjoys it. I mean, like I said, he's not here today. Um, it, reason why he's not here is because like it's it can be a little bit tricky getting us together um, sometimes we are both working guys we um you know doing city skyline YouTube videos is definitely something that we do on the side and um you know working all the time and um, living in other countries we have a bit of a hard time sometimes just syncing up our free time and we've been pretty blessed over the last few months but, you know, sometimes we just can't get the sync up, to sync up quite as much as we'd like to. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry that it is just me. I will try and shoot for Skib and I for the next video. What I am doing is I am just getting a bit of greenery around this area. I wanted, like I said, this area to be really, really nice. I wanted there to be lots of green, lots of tiles, lots of really nice shops lots of place for leisure. This is a definite place to show off a bit of money and to, um, I guess, spend a bit. I um, really like the way this bit turned out. I have, do have a bit of a hard time with using these tiles. However, you know, sometimes you just need to dive straight into it and just start working on it. Otherwise, you can just fluff around for ages um, thinking about what you're planning on building and never really achieve anything. I'm using these benches that I guess Skib downloaded. I don't think I don't remember downloading them, but they're so they're super modern and really nice. That's something that I haven't used in any of my other builds. So um, it's really cool because we work together. It's really cool seeing the things that he downloads, and um, you know, think about where he's used it and also using it in my builds. It's always I'm um, really really cool. Um, I do love downloading stuff from the workshop. It is um, a massive hobby of mine to see all the amazing mods and assets that people are constantly uh, developing for this game. Um, I'm using tons of vanilla buildings for this uh, build. The reason why is because they are actually quite cool and I'm using more and more vanilla buildings uh, throughout my builds. I, I really think that they have a lot to offer and especially when you place down lots of uh, props around them, it just takes away that vanilla edge to them and you can kind of make it a bit more your own, uh, a little bit more unique. So that's what I tend to do. I might place down some tiles or I might place some billboards on it or some trees around it and voila, you have a really unique building that was, you know, otherwise a very plain vanilla asset. Mind you, I definitely don't use all the vanilla assets, uh, a lot of them are pretty terrible. A lot of them are, you know, not so bad, I guess. Um, you also just saw me just cover up a car park using some trees. Uh, like, that's the problem with a lot of assets. They come with car parks and they're not really in places that you'd really want the, a car park to be. I use trees just to cover it up. Uh, you know what? To be honest, I've talked about covering things up with, <laughs> with trees a thousand times in every, every other video. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the feeling of Asara in this build. I try to get the feeling of Asara in pretty much every build that I do in this um, series. I 
actually, I think I do that with every build that I do. It's really, really important to get that feeling of the country or the place or the the atmosphere of the area that you are building uh, by always just kind of thinking back to what they do in this country or what they do in um, you know the the place that you are you are building. You know, if you're going to be building a New York styled city, then you know, think about the things that would go into a New York style build in every build. And that's what I do in everything. So, um, things that I am placing down to make it more Asarian, uh, lots of those, uh, kind of like Egyptian, uh, hieroglyphic statues and buildings and tiles and all those bits and pieces that have been made by our brilliant asset creators. And, um, I, you know, just placing one or two of those things down in, every couple of blocks just make make it just look very much very much Asarian which is um, very cool also you'll see me just down the track at the very end of the episode I will be placing down some Asarian flags which looks so damn cool I barely ever use them um, stick around for the very end of the episode the cinematics are really great but also the last I don't know two minutes of the builds I think is probably the best part of it um, it, it looks really, really damn nice. Um, also, um, I wanted to mention that the buildings that I've placed down around here, they don't really have any purpose at the moment. Um, I guess you can imagine they might be residential, but I know that if I leave it in the hands of you guys in the comments below, please hit me up. I want to know what you think that these buildings represent in Asara. I mean, maybe they're some sort of corporation or maybe they're related to the oil fields just down the road. Maybe they got something to do with the pyramids that we have. Or maybe they got something to do with the prison. I, like, let me know. I'd really love to know because I've got no stories in my brain. Um, I was just placing them down. There's that massive big bold one that you saw from Chicago. I think that really looks like to me some sort of government office. Um, whereas the one next to it, the tallest building of Asara, has no name and it has no purpose you know perhaps it is a just a giant hotel that you know if you can justify it i think that would definitely work um but yeah i'd really love to know definitely hit us up we'll um we'll talk about it in the next episode getting back to what i am building on screen though and you've seen me place down a couple of those really awesome custom car parks that have just made their way onto the workshop uh, to be honest, they've been on there for about a month now. They're so damn good. I've only used them a couple of times. Prez does a really good car park um, in one of his episodes. Um, definitely check them out if you haven't already. They are just incredible. Um, I'm not very good at using them just yet. They take a little while to get your head around. I am no expert at them. Um, however, I do plan to use them far more than I have, have, in, have used in the past. But mind you, they've only been out for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm also doing on screen and I'm um, just trying to detail this um, underneath each of these massive buildings like I said before I have only really built or done this sort of a build um, in Springwood when I have done the downtown however this is not particularly a downtown for Osara or El Canem this is more of a, a financial district where a lot of these bigger buildings for corporations and for the bigger businesses and hotels within the city. So I didn't want it to be very historical. So I've really uh, done a real lack of older style buildings, which is what we've been doing mostly in Asara, very older style buildings. The whole idea behind this one area was just a pocket of wealth and a bit of a show for um, us being the government of Asara. Uh, you know, so this is um, was kind of an exciting build because I could actually think a lot about uh, what or the reasons behind us build like this for a government and, um, you know, the sort of people that would be visiting a place like this and I guess like how you'd feel uh, driving around these places. You know, you'd, I guess you'd kind of go between... Um, you know, if we were to drive through Osara, you'd see mostly the poorer side of things. And then um, as you got closer to the city, you'd see a lot more historical areas and um, monuments and things like that. And then over in the corner, which is this spot over here, is um, just just a big, 
big old show of money, <laughs> which, um, which is what I really wanted. I really wanted to um, just just to go for his, um, yeah, get as flashy as possible. So that's why I'm going for lots of tiles. That's why I'm going for lots of statues. You've seen me do lots of plants, um, and you'll also see me place down a whole bunch of well, not a whole bunch, three. I placed down three sports cars as well, just to um, really. Um, gets that feeling um, ingrained into this area. Um, like I said before, putting in these tiles are not the easiest thing to do. They have a really hard time fighting for the top surface, so they will constantly um, flicker and do all sorts of annoying things. Um, I just usually I try to avoid it as much as possible. I was trying to avoid it in this build, however, I still just did it anyway. Um, so you see all sorts of god awful flickering going on down there, but I just, I really wanted this pattern, and I had it in my mind, so I just felt like I had to do it. Um, by the way, you see just down there in front of that building, there is a very, very annoying fountain that um, came with the building, and it just stuck there, and I totally forgot about it, and then I placed on all those tiles and realized that it's so awkwardly in a bad spot and I'll just let stuff it. I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, not trying to be lazy, I just, I really just wanted to move on. I didn't want to place down all those tiles again. Um, uh, that's a little bit of reasoning behind that thought process. Um, I am also just decorating these roads. Um, by the way, I, I never really ever uh, place down roads with trees. I usually place them down by myself because um, in real life, trees grow well, trees are planted, I guess, on these roads. However, you know, they get knocked down every now and again, and, um, you know, one tree will grow faster than the other, and uh, even humans don't really place things as symmetrical as it may seem to be. So I like to place them down all by myself. <laughs> all by myself. It sounds like I'm doing something very flash, but um, I do like to place them down myself because I, I think it gives it a more natural look and that's what I'm always going for, that real natural look. And um, yeah, then that's probably why I place down so many scuff marks and dirt marks and things like that because, um, you know, cities are really dirty and really, um, you know, they've been lived in for a long time so it's really important to me to really scuff up my cities. Um, by the way, it's really strange doing commentary without looking at any Google Earth pictures and things like that. Uh, um, but like, I really wanted to not include them in this uh, episode because I just didn't use it for this build. So I didn't want to place them down and talk about something that I did that I didn't, if that makes sense. Um, this build is totally based off just what I was um, thinking in my head and that's something I'm definitely not going to do all the time, but every now and again I do like to just imagine how a place would look. Definitely had something in my brain that I wanted to place down, and um, that skyline pretty much hit the nail on the head. I um, really like the main building of Asara at the moment, that the tallest one. I think it fits in beautifully. I love the join. <laughs> I'm such a sucker for those bridges between those um, buildings. I used to live next to one, I used to love the building so much and then they knocked it down as I was really devastated when they did, even though the building was actually quite ugly, the two buildings I should say. I, I think it was a good reason why they knocked it down. It is, it, I don't know, it feels, when they join buildings together it seems, you know, it's not a move that happens very often in Australia, Ugh, I was about to say Sara. it's not a move that happens very often in Australia. Um, however, I've seen in a lot of Asian countries and um, I have seen a lot of photos of Middle Eastern countries where um, they do have the bridge in between. I'm a massive sucker for it. I do really love it. So, um, you know, it was very fitting to find a building like that to fit down in Osara. Um, this last little part of the build and I am placing down uh, an entrance for this big building. If you missed what I said before, you need to come up with a story behind this building. I don't know what it's for. It could be a hotel. Um, these cars that I placed down are going to be pretty flash and I placed out a whole bunch of Asara flags um, just waving around, just being super proud of this um, building. So definitely hit me up in the comments and let me know if you can think of any stories behind this uh, building. We definitely need one. Uh, but this area here is 
just an entrance for these cars to park and um, the valet to uh, drive away somewhere safe. Um, the entrance, I wanted this entrance to be super flash like the rest of everything um, and somewhat similar to uh, Springwood. I didn't want to detail every single square inch of this uh, downtown, this financial center, uh, financial, financial district I should say. But I did want to just detail a couple of really important spots and this is just one of them. Um, also, I have mentioned before, but I will be revisiting this area. I um, This area is not complete in my brain. I do want to really f uh, finish off the areas around the waterfront. I think some really cool big old, big old hotels might look really cool there. Some pedestrian ways and um, if you've got so any other suggestions, please hit me up. I do love reading them, even if I can't response to every single one of them um, but guys look that is pretty much it for this episode and um, thank you so much for tuning in it's always a blast and I always really enjoy doing it and I love getting your feedback and I love it when you like this video so if you haven't already definitely go and do that um, right away <laughs> um, thanks again guys it's been um, a really good one and um, I hope you have a great week and I catch you guys in the next video see you later